In today's episode, we are continuing the build of my 1995 Nissan GQ TD42 Patrol. In the last few episodes, we've redone the inside of the car, we've done the GU diffs, twin lockers, suspension, we've painted it, and now we're finally up to the bar work. In this episode, you'll see the bar work get built, start to finish, completely custom, and I was super stoked with how it came out. Proudly supported by Tread, Superior Engineering, and in part by. So I'm down here in Newcastle, and the weather is horrendous today. Raining and windy, but that's all right, we've got a shed here, so. This is going to be saying a bit, a little bit different this one, because in the past I've always just bought a bull bar and you see it, me install it on my four wheel drive. Um, whereas this time I'm actually getting some custom bar work built. So I'm with Paul here. So Paul, uh, this is like you just do this on the weekends in yeah, your shed. Yeah, just a weekend. Sort yeah. Of so old. you you call it on the side fab, don't you? Yes. Yeah. So just weekends, do jobs for mates, yeah, bits and pieces. Yeah, nice like that, yeah. So yeah. that way I can give a better quality because I'm not worried about trying to make money off it. Yeah. So the product ends up being slightly better than just an off-the-shelf thing. So you're just doing it all here in your garage. you got stuff yeah. everywhere. <laughs> Where did you learn these skills from? Um, so I'm a ball maker by trade. 16 years ago I started. So we're going to do bull bar, brush bars, and then the rock sliders. Not going to worry about the back just yet, just going to do all this front end to start with. So I think you said it probably takes about two, three weekends. Yeah. 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 So I'm just going to film sort of the process start to finish, I guess, of all this bar work and how it gets built. I'm pretty interested because i got no idea, like, you know, how this gets built and how it gets done. So it's always cool to sort of see the behind the scenes and all these things come together. But uh, yeah, I think I've talked enough. Better, better get some work done. <laughs> the other thing is for this GQ, I'm getting a high mount winch for it. So I don't have it yet. It's being built a Warn M8724. Do you know the numbers of them? I'm not sure. It's yeah, it's, but it's a Warn high mount. I don't have the winch here. So we're gonna have to get the measurements of it and make this bar work to fit the high mount winch. So the first step is the bull bar? Yes. And this is what you're making the bull bar with? Yes, this yeah. and some of the tube sitting behind. Okay, so what is that material, uh, like thickness of it and stuff? Uh, six millimetre, just mould steel sheet. So you're measuring up the mounting for it now, are you? Yes. Makes it easier, I guess, that there's nothing on the front of this car as well. It does, <laughs> yes. It certainly does make it easier. So Paul's just doing a heap of measuring here in the start now, I think, what, what is it? Measure once, cut, measure, cut. Measure five times, cut twice. And then when it's wrong, weld it back together. Yeah, it. yeah, that's right. So obviously you want to get the measurement right from the start so you're not yeah, cutting and welding multiple times later on trying to make it work. So yeah, fair bit of just uh, pre-planning out. So getting the measurements and drawing everything up to scale. We found the measurements of the winch online. Okay, so basically what we've got is, this bit here is your chassis rail. Yeah. So we're going to come off the inside of the chassis rail, which is where your mounting bolts are. So that sort of your chassis is kind of there on both sides. We'll come out a bit, in, across and back down. That should roughly be the size of your winch with the motor hanging off that side. That's approximately the centre line. What's happened now? This is all your measurements gone from your paper onto your yes. sheet. So this is pretty much your main section of your bull bar yeah. with all your lines, but some of them are going to get cut and then welded back together yes. on, on an angle. Yes, yeah, so yeah. if I had a big press, I could just do it out of one sheet, but unfortunately I don't have a $50,000 machine for that. <laughs> yeah. So this is the next best thing. So you start making all these cuts now? Yes. Slightly quicker than a grinder. <laughs> yeah. And it also gives a nice clean cut, so. It's weird seeing what's going to be a bull bar. Or... <laughs> As a flat sheet? Yeah, a flat sheet <laughs> of little bits of metal cut out. <laughs> so how do you clean them up? No, uh, just with a grinder. Yeah. Like just sort of take the scale off it around the edges, just clean up any little dags, make it nice and neat for welding, and then 
Obviously the cleaner the steel the better the weld quality is. That there was what they looked like beforehand and then uh, work out the holes, mark them, punch them and then we can start putting it together. Yeah, so that's all the bull bar gets mounted to, hey, just the chassis, yep. both yeah, points. Just, yeah, just both sides. And what, three chassis. bolts each side? Ah, uh, yeah. You've got all your exact measurements yep. from the chassis, yep. where so that's all going to mount up, yep. and now you've got to punch them out. Yes, so because they're a 14mm bolt that we're going to be using, we're going to go to a 16mm hole just to give it a couple of mil of clearance. Yeah. But obviously if we go too big, then there's a good chance it'll move when you winch. So how do you cut out metal in a hole shape that's that thick? You could use a drill, Yeah. or you buy a punch. So just line the punch up with that center pot, and there we have a nice hole. Nice. That's definitely easier than drilling it out. It certainly is. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've got this one done, I'll actually go do a test fit, make sure it's right before I do the other side. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you just get your yeah, nice holes coming out of that. Yeah, I'll That's just cool. give them a little bit of a clean to get the sharp edge off. But yeah, so you can see there how the bolt's just got a couple of mil and it's not much, but... There you go. So then the rest of the bar can come off this and then we can do all the tube work out of it. Skid plate under here which will tie everything in or I might even just run a tube between the two. Yeah, just to stiffen up that plate. Because yeah, obviously sure. if you're on a silly angle and you're winching on this angle it's going to try and flex it so yeah. we brace it in a bit better that way. Yeah, when I do silly things out the bush. Not silly things, <laughs> interesting things. <laughs> So the tacking is just to hold it all in place. Yeah. So then you can properly see it's come together before you actually weld it up and brace it. Yeah, so that's the angle we're going for. See how I'm a little bit out? Yeah. If I welded it, it wouldn't work on the car. So if it's tacked, you can still move it a little. And then, yeah, and then you can just kind of build it, brace it, and go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so see I've got a nice sort of corner to corner there. Yeah. When you actually see the pocket, see how the tacks kind of punch through a little bit? Yeah. That way, when I go to weld it, it'll punch in the other side as well, and when I fill it, yeah. it'll be essentially one solid sheet again then. Yeah, so. So we got the two two side rails like mounted to the chassis, bolted on there, all lined up, done all the measurements, and then you're gonna measure up and build the centerpiece center piece that the winch will mount to, yeah. yeah. And then I'll build all the bracing off it as well. Yeah. yeah. So what is that tool? Uh, it's a deburrer. Base layer of it there, come together. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, like you can still sort of see it's got a little bit of play in it. Yeah. Like just once we start bracing it out and stuff, it'll just can't, it'll, all that will stop. It'll be solid, you won't move it. You could probably run straight down with it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Which is sort of the goal. Yeah, so what's your plan with the bracing? Um, so we'll put a tube that will run across the back here. Yeah. And then we'll plate this bottom side here in as well. Yeah. So instead of it just being like a triangle, I'll have like that third sort of lock in there, which will stop a lot of twisting. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll run another piece that goes up and around here. That'll brace the top off. This is some of the bracing. Yeah. And it's just, you should cut it and be cold saw. Yeah. It's nice and efficient. Yeah. It's a nice square cut. Yeah, sweet. And so, it'll fit straight into where we're going in there. Yeah, so you measured that up? Yes, I've yeah. already measured it. Marked it, put it on the right side of the blade. And just like that, we have a nice neat cut. Fit just like that. Perfect. Don't even need to weld it, just <laughs> sit it in there. <laughs> oh, I might, might want to weld it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, bit of good measure, but it's the start of the bracing at least. 
Yeah, that's definitely going to stop that twisting either, either direction with yeah. that big pipe in there. Yeah, so I've run the heavier pipe there, so that way if you do actually like hit some rocks and that, it'll wanna, it won't want to bend up as easily. We're just measuring what the skid plate's going to be now. Oh, everything's within a mil, so I'm not really going to argue with that. So we'll cut the sheet that sits in there, yeah. tack that in, and that'll stop a lot of twisting. That's good, I'll clean that up and that can go in and um, that's a lot of bracing in there then. I shouldn't be able to break it. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you get worried if you do. <laughs> so all these lips you're putting on, are they just yeah. for strength? Or? Yeah, 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 so that's going to help stop this from trying to like belly in that sort of area. Yeah, okay. So it'll have to buckle all this with it. Yeah, so you're going to put them right around? Yep. Yeah. yeah, so these two will go here and then I'll go along the one up there which will then sit across the top. So that's that middle section all finished and plated up now with those size side bits on. We'll um, start with just some tube, it'll just come straight off here. We'll work out whereabouts we want it to sort of start bending back for the corners. So with this bull bar, and any bull bar I guess, once you put a high mount winch on it, you end up taking up this whole space where the high mount winch sits, meaning you lose your spotlight space, because the spotlights can't fit there anymore because all your motor and that's going to fit there. You obviously can't put spotlights out here in the way headlights so i've got these couple smaller ones from ultimate nine and what we're thinking is we just incorporate them into the bar on the side now obviously they're going to be nothing like spotlights but they will just give that bit of light they'll come on with high beam and when you're four wheel driving of a night sit there come out of the side a bit and what we're also thinking is squeezing a little light bar along the top there too maybe just a 20 inch one so see how that there is just kind of going to float just past that corner there? Yeah, yeah. And then we'll put another band there to finish it. How thick the pipe you use? Is it just like a standard pipe? Um, or? So this one's 3.2 millimetres. Yeah. And the other parts that are in your bar are four. So at the moment, I'm just sort of trying to follow that body line nicely. So the tube comes off it at the same angle as the panel. A bit here just to allow for the you know diffs that are gonna go under it. Yeah, yeah, because I was gonna come out wider, so allow for those G diffs. Yeah, it wide it's offset still rims, thirty fives, all that stuff. So all I'm really doing now is I'm just going to measure to where that bend needs to be. I'll mark it on the pipe and we'll go bend it. So basically we're just going to literally copy that to an extent. Yeah. 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 So that's sort of where we are. I'm just going to work out that angle and then that's kind of what that looks like. That. Oh. Don't ask me to do that again, because <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. But I am pretty darn happy with how that's just sat there. You just gotta do the same on the other side. Yeah, that's uh, tomorrow's <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, then that light will fit nicely in there. I don't know if I said yet, I forgot, but we are gonna plate this through here. I don't really like the look as much of the open one, so I think it'll look good. Yeah, plate through there, that light. Mm. sitting in there starting to get dark outside now so we're gonna finish up for the day and then we'll keep going with this tomorrow but yeah bull bars starting to come together which is awesome back again the next morning i am losing my voice a little bit as well i don't know what's going on i think i'm just a bit worn out from doing too much lately but we've got sunshine today which is nice we just parked the car out here on level ground so we can have a bit more of a look at this Bull bar coming together on flat ground because obviously where it was being built yesterday it's kind of down in a divot so it was a bit hard to see all the angles. Assuming the plan is just going to be to start replicating that side over there isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so rebuild the other side and then we can start with the hoops. Yeah. The thing I'm working out about custom bar work is you're better off knowing what you want before you get here because Paul's just asking me every 10 seconds I want this angle or that angle and this hoop like that, that like that and I'm just sitting here like oh, I've got no idea so I spent a bit of time last night looking through photos of other bull bars trying to work out how I want the angles and everything of the hoops. 
So this is also. One, of, one of my tube notches. So basically set the angle up on this, put your drill onto your hole saw and um, off you go. And, and what's it doing? Like what's it making? So this um, arbor is the same size as the tube. Yeah. So it'll actually scallop that circle into the tubing so that way when we go to put on the bar it'll just sit straight on. So as you can see I've only got to just grind that little piece of it off just because that's where the vice is on my notcher. Yeah, okay. And other, otherwise that tubing will literally just sit in like so. And then you weld it together. Yeah, makes everything a lot easier. So essentially that's with that notch and it just sort of sits in there nicely like that. We'll just find that happy spot there. Yeah. And then that's where and we'll mark that off to trim it. That, yeah. yeah. So. And this internal bit is just like bracing and structure, isn't it? Yes. It's, so if you hit something here, yeah. See, I can sort of move it a little bit still. Yeah. Well, you've it's only held on here. Yeah. So if I've gone from here to here, it's then forming the triangle, which is your strongest sort of shape yeah. you can get. It's all held in there, strong now. It's amazing what one piece of pipe can do. Yeah. Now it's build the other side to match. So that's the other side built to match now. So got the two matching sides. But we did work out we have a little, little bit of an issue. We're gonna have to change that center piece a bit. And I was looking at my mate's Tim, uh, my mate Tim's car, because he has the same worn winch as I'm gonna be getting. And his center piece is bigger. And I saw that his winch came right out to the edge and I was like, oh, I'm not sure if it's gonna fit. Now we had measurements, but one side of it actually like comes out further than the other so it's 430 but it's like there out to there because one side has uh, what's on one side it's like the clutch and stuff isn't it yeah the gearbox is on one side so it means we would have been within but yeah because you got to have your fair lead and everything center would have been ideal if I had the winch here I was meant to have it here to get this done but it just hasn't hasn't got uh, built and turned up in time so Paul's had to work with uh, measurements that we sort thought we had but we didn't have and we had them and then they were wrong and then yeah. mix, mix, of er think. mix of everything else but yeah uh, we're gonna be able to leave it all there cut sort of it out bit by bit. We just have shown these front two tubes the back tube can stay the same and then we're just gonna make a bigger front center piece and bring that out there so the center piece will come out to sort of where it's been marked down there and there that's the good thing about just tacking it on makes it easier to change. Just imagine trying to change it once it was all welded. <laughs> <It's nightmare. laughs> it's all coming back together again now. So they're obviously sliced, that bracket's been bent out. So we've got that bigger opening now, and then we're just working out how we're gonna rebuild that centerpiece. So what we were saying, you see you were saying, cut that down there, weren't you? Yeah, so we'll cut that off there. Yep, and cut then that we'll off. put another sheet in there, that way you'll have sort of down, angled, angled. So yeah. it'll kind of help you roll on top of an obstacle. Yeah, because we've come out that bit, and then yeah, yeah. Having, I think having that sort of angled plate into the flat one, if I hit something rather than just banging straight into it or sort of slide up over things yeah yeah which would be good especially when it comes to rock steps and stuff like that yeah but yeah i think that angle plate yeah work better and look better the day is disappearing fast we didn't start till oh, i didn't get here to 10 30 or something it's father's day today so i went out for breakfast um with demi and zim It's a little bit hard to see because of the reflection, but this is all the new design drawn up that it's ready to get cut. That's the cool thing about custom. You can just lay it all out on a sheet of metal and- Yeah, change whatever you want. Yeah, draw it up and work out what you want. Yeah. Then you're through. Finally! Oh, yeah, there's a bit of meat to them. Yeah. <laughs> what was the thickness on them again? I forget. Uh, six mil. Yeah, six so. mil steel. 
It's always best to be slightly um, too thick than not thick enough. So this is dimple dies, and basically it'll just force this plug through the hole and it'll press the sheet so it actually adds a bit of stiffness into it. So because we've removed such a large hole out of it, this will put a bit of strength back in to replace it. Okay, so I was just about to ask what's the point of doing that over just a hole? It's because it re-strengthens it, does yes. it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. like if you had a very thin strip, you know, you can bend them quite easily. Yeah. Dimple, putting dimples so it actually stiffens it right back up because yeah. it puts a flare on the sheet so it's kind of adds thickness. Yeah, okay. So, wall saving weight looking good. Yeah, perfect. And there we go, that's sort of the end result there. So that little flare will put a lot of strength back into that plate. Do all them, then I'll give it a clean up and be good to go then. Looks a lot nicer than just a straight hole. We'll finish up there for the night because it's getting dark outside. So yeah, dimples are in. Paul's gonna finish cutting all the rest of this out because we've already seen him do it the last time so we don't need to see that at all again cut that all out you're gonna tack it all together yep. on the bar yep. and then that'll be all sitting here next time i turn up yep. all right back again on the next weekend to keep going with this bar work now paul's done you've done a little bit while i've been away haven't bit, you yeah. yeah so i've sort of reassembled the bar definitely looks better now i reckon like a more angled plate on it there and the, the dimple plate through it. So that's all the main section of the bar done really, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so now we're going to go on to the hoops of the bar. So that'll be the next uh, step, work out the shape and size and hoops and where I want them to sit. So that'll be the next head scratcher. And my GQ is still on the hoist at SP, getting all the diffs and suspension and all that work done. So I wasn't able to ring it down, but luckily for me, Paul has his own GQ here, so we're just going to be using his for all the template and building stuff today. The only thing is, his doesn't have the side uh, light things there like mine does, so I just had to sort of tape them up so that when we make these brush bars, we don't cover it up. So with the hoops, yeah, we're using a thicker tube for the middle hoop, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, and then the plan is just we marked one side, and then we can... Work off the centre and replicate the other to yeah. make it the same. Yeah, okay. So now that we got the centre hoop sorted, yep. how, what's the plan to start working out the... Um... Um, we'll tack the centre hoop on, and oh, then yeah. we'll work out the shape that we want the outer hoops to be, and we'll kind of just work. Now, what sort of lean would you like on this? Newer cars have to lean backwards because of the airbag. Go, so go back in a bit. Feel like straight or slightly out, maybe. So yeah, come up to like there, then we either go down in. Yeah. Like an angry eye thing. Yeah. Or the... As long as it's what you want it to look like, then we're good. So there's the problem, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I want it to look like. <laughs> Just working out this hoop option now, coming up with all the ideas there. So I was sort of thinking maybe like coming up and then an angry eye in, but now I'm thinking maybe sort of straight up, a bit of an out across and then kink down in. I think that'll look good. I think I prefer that over the straight up and straight in. With the tubes? So this one's a little bit of a smaller tube we've gone with? Yeah, so... So what's this main bulk, tube? The bulkier bar is 40 nominal bore. Yeah. And the outer hoop's gonna be 32 nominal bore. Nominal bore, the outside of the tube stays the same and your thickness changes internally. Yeah. Whereas if you go to like a proper pipe, the inside diameter stays and the outside changes for thickness. That was roughly the height that I was yeah. thinking it was going to end up at. Yeah, it's good when like you leave a bit of over so then we can sort of see where it sits and yeah. make it exact. Oh, yeah. Because it's always harder when you just trying to imagine it. See so, yeah, how it's quite close there. Like, if you're happy with that, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't know if you wanted it to kind of go back over and then. Maybe a kink? What do you reckon? Oh. Up to, you're just gonna, say, you're just gonna say up to me. Yep. You happy with that? Yeah. One side hoop done, now it's gotta do the other. I definitely reckon like, 
we did the right thing changing that centerpiece. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I agree with you on that one. Yeah. So that's the bull bar all together now. Paul built the first slider during the week, uh, so we could have it ready today. So first slider there, we're gonna bolt that on now. Uh, I've just got to make up one plate for it, for the front mount and then. Yeah, okay, so that I have three mounts on it. Yeah, so another mount for the slider there, mount that on and then we can build the brush bar. Pretty strong looking slider. Yes, it's just a sort of standardish design, so you just sort of, obviously that there goes underneath your sill line. Yeah. And that's obviously your heavier pipe. Yeah. That way you're not gonna push up into the sill. That there's slightly thinner and it's, it's not weak, it just allows for a little bit of movement. Because obviously if you land out here, if your chassis is running there, you get a lot, much bigger leverage effect. So yep. I want that to have a little bit of movement before it tries to rip it. And then you just got three big bolt-on mounts onto yeah. the chassis. So that one will get notched and go off there. Yep. And that'll be your front mount. And then those two just clamp around the chassis. And I know you mentioned about angles. Yep. Yeah, so what angle did you do this um, one at? So we've gone 25 degrees. I think you said 20% is traditional uh, if you want like a step. Yeah, so 20 degrees is sort of standard, which is about more so about that sort of angle. Yeah. So you have the feet are off the ground there. Yeah. Whereas yours are just that little bit steeper, just to help give it more of a sliding effect. So what do you go up to? You go up to like 35 or something in yeah, extreme cases. Yeah, 35's a fairly steep angle. And yeah. You can't use them as a step because they are so steep. Yeah, and so we're just sort of going mid-range. Yeah. And what, I forget, you said this last weekend, what's the benefit of going steeper on it? Um, so because you've got more of an angle, if you land on something, it's going to want to push the car off easier. Yeah. Whereas if you're sitting flat, it's hard to go sideways, whereas if you've got the angle, it wants to slide. Yeah, so the more angle, the better. You just lose that, that use of a step a yeah. bit. Yeah, so that's why I sort of went for the mid-range. When I got 40s on it, I'll still be able to hop in. <laughs> <laughs> One more question, bolting them on, you just use big bolts? Pretty much. Anything in particular there? Um, no, so the 8.8 .8 grade, which is your high tensile bolts. Yeah. So uh, they're stronger quality. For the mock-up, I'll just use standard nuts, but when we go to do the final fit, I'll put nylons on there so they don't rattle loose. Bring a light thorn, angel giant, I ain't gonna fire on. Catch a fade, you I'm wrong, I'm gone. Y'all can catch the wave that I am on, I am on. So there's that slider on, it sits out a nice distance from the body there. I like it sort of out like that, so protects the side of your vehicle, you know, when it's leaning out a bit and you still still allows you to use it as a bit of a step. And then we are actually going to check a plate, we're checker plating, is yeah, that right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just to protect the seals, because the problem I find when I've had rock sliders like this in the past is the sticks still come up in between them and bend, bend your seals anyway, so that's why I said let's put a plate across the top of it. But yeah, that's why the slides in looks good, so now what we start working out a yeah, awesome. So this is going to be the brush bars? Yes, yes. Yeah. So what's your plan now? So this part here will become one brush bar. Yeah. So I'll just cut it a bit long again, I'll notch it, and then we'll just start building it, and then at the end I'll measure the camber and actually cut that section out of it. off me, you say the least, you better believe we been through the ringer, we're through the damn marinas, menu that's for dinner, or the ring of five fingers, and the difference that's between us, read it, written, it's a penis, huh? So in other words... Yeah, well, having this bar here will make it a lot stronger through there, won't yes, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, Pretty it's much it's any good. hits, like, in here is not going to be any movement. No, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's actually quite nice. Uh, this is all me, ain't got much to do with who you know. Yeah. Looks like it's getting complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. A lot of bends. Yeah, no, that looks very good. I think, it, yeah, the whole brush bar looks heaps better with that side bit there. All I'll do is I'll just measure what it actually physically is. And the idea is just so that the bar work isn't one big piece. Yeah. Is that simply all you're doing? Yes. Yeah, Splitting so, it into two. Yeah, so if you've got to take something off, you can. Yeah, otherwise if you didn't have that joiner, uh, like, good luck getting it all off. Yep. <laughs> These just literally mean that one drops out of the other. But yeah. then when they're bolted together, they've got cam like a cam lock system in them. Yeah. So that way it's not actually gonna fall apart on itself. Yeah. So that's the brush bar done now. I reckon it looks really good the way it's come out, especially with that little extra bit there. So that'll give it heaps of strength in that corner and 
basically through the whole thing so it's all linked together now just got to cut it and make that joiner so you do have that way of getting it apart and disassembling it all it's got a few tacks on it but that's it pretty much done yeah that's come out really good i'm really happy with like all that side bit through there <laughs> Just gonna trim that off there, plate that up. That's all really coming together, that looks awesome. Yep. So yeah, you gotta check and plate the sliders, a few touches, we gotta infill the bull bar, add in the lights. And I reckon once we get the winch and light bar there, it'll all fill it in nicely. So I'm gonna head off now, cause we've sorta of got all the design, everything's got, got uh, come together. Paul's just gotta finish off all the little bits and pieces himself and obviously do the other side. Uh, I'm going to get a bit of footage of the other slider being built but just before I go. But yeah, super stoked of how that's come out and then obviously sent a, get sent away to get powder coated and stuff like that too. So uh, next time you see this will be probably a few weeks from now once it's done powder coated and we're installing it on uh, my GQ. Unless unless you steal it and then I, <laughs> oh, I, I come back and, I come back and it's gone <laughs> so making a set of uh, sliders now what's your plan there um, first of all I'm gonna notch this pipe so we'll notch it bend it and then I'll put cap plates on this weld them out clean them tack that on make the inner pieces and then put the outers all together and the feet and legs Easy as that. Easy, yeah, sure. <laughs> so sliders aren't overly complicating compared to something like a bull bar. No. No. Gosh, no. Much more simple. Yeah. <laughs> so you just do that three times. Yep, see it. I must say it looks pretty good on the first look. Alrighty, so I'm back again a few, le few weeks later to pick up and mount all the bar work. Paul's got it all finished up, all been powder, co powder coated. I'm here late on a Friday afternoon slash coming at night, so I'm trying to do this before it gets dark. As you can see, the GQ's obviously had a lot of work done to it since we built the bar work. So bar work, you've obviously mounted all the lights on it. They yeah. turned out pretty nice, those, especially those square ones in there. Better than I thought. Yeah, and then we got the light bar at the top there, We've got the brackets for that, did the infill plates, and you got it all powder coated. So that's it, all the bar work done. Super stoked of how it came out. It was pretty cool being involved in the process and building something like that from scratch. Obviously I didn't do it, but it was, it was cool seeing it all come together. That's obviously the front down to the sliders done. I do have a rear bar coming, so you will see that soon. But we'll finish up that episode now and I'll see you guys in the next one. Pretty that's much. actually a good question, probably for anyone watching this video. <laughs> if they want something from you, they gotta to come to you. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's just one of those things. <laughs> no, that's right. That answers that question.
So I just, <clears throat> yeah, losing my voice a bit already. Because this is why I leave bits of grain on things so we can. So you can deal with pests like me. <laughs> that camera's turned on, right? We all heard him say pests. 